Okay, so hello, welcome back to another Unity multiplayer tutorial. Today we're going to be taking this project, which is multiplayer, but we can only test it locally at the moment, and we're going to set up Unity's relay service so that anyone can connect from anywhere just with a join code. I hope you're looking forward to it, so let's get started. So as always, there'll be a link at the top of the description to our repository for this project, so you can go and download it if you wish to do so. So now with that out of the way, we can head into Unity, and I'll go through everything that I've set up. So if we head to our package manager in window package manager, I've added the relay package here, and that's what we're going to be using. And that has a dependency of the authentication package, so you don't have to add that manually, but we will be using this. And once you've installed relay, a window will pop up asking you to link your project to the Unity services website. So you want to go ahead and do that, that will be required. And whilst Relay is a paid service, there is a free tier, and I'll show you that in a minute, and we'll only be using the free tier anyway. It's completely fine for testing. So if I go to Edit, uh, Project Settings, and then Services, you can see here that it is linked to my project. So it's got the Organization Dapper Dino, the name of the project, uh, I've selected No down here, everything is hooked up, and you can even go to the dashboard via this link, and it'll take you to the website. So on the website, you'll see the project here, and I'm going to click on the left down on the multiplayer section, and you'll see all of the various multiplayer services they offer. And for now, we're just using Relay. So if you select Relay, mine is enabled, so yours might look a little bit different. Yours will look like the lobby one. It'll say lobby, or it'll say Relay, set up Relay. So click that and just follow through next, 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 enable it, and then once you're done, it will look something like this. And to be able to use these services, I think you might need to add payment details, even though that doesn't mean it will charge you necessarily. If you head to the About section, it'll say here your monthly free limits. So I'm on zero on the bandwidth, and then the uh, CCU is concurrent users, and because I'm only ever testing against myself, it's only at two, and you can have up to 50 before you have to start paying. So this will be completely fine for anyone just wanting to learn and test with all this. And then if you want the documentation, you can click here, on the about documentation and this will explain most of the things that we're going to be doing in today's video. But now that we've got our project hooked up and Relay is enabled we can now do the rest inside of Unity. So what have I done in here? Well in the main menu I've taken all of our menu buttons and put them under a game object called menu panel and I've hidden them and I've made a new panel just with some text called connecting text it just says connecting and what will happen is you run the game this screen will be here, and then we're going to write some code to authenticate with the Unity Gaming services. And then once it has authenticated you, it will hide this panel and enable the menu panel. And since the relay service is for self-hosted games, I've decided to actually remove uh, the server button. I should go back to the main menu panel here. Uh, so we just have host button, client button. I've removed the server one, and I've added an input field here. And this is where you're going to put in the join code. So when you start hosting a game, it will generate a code for you. You can then give that to your friends and then they can enter it here, hit client, and that will connect them. So there's no need for the server button anymore. And then because of that, I've taken the server manager that we did have and I've just renamed it to host manager. So there's no functional changes there. I've just changed the name and then I've gone through anywhere in our code where we referenced the server manager and I've just changed it to host manager. And then I've also created the client manager, which is a copy basically, except it's empty. So it is just a singleton. That's all we have right now is a singleton with the method that calls start client. So if I look in our main menu code, uh, if I go to UI, main menu, it's basically just how it was. We have host calls host manager dot start host, client calls uh, client manager dot start client. And I guess there's one other thing I've done. If we head over to our scenes, go to the character selection scene, at the top left, let's go into the prefab, I've added some text for the join code. So for example, if our join code is dapper and we go to the game, we just see dapper at the top left and that is an easy way. We could log it out to the console, but we want the host to be able to read the code in the game and tell it to their friends. So let's put that blank now, but I have got that there. Okay, let's head back to the main menu scene and we can start coding. So we're going to go into our script and we're going to start with the networking host manager script. So in the host manager, we can scroll down to the start host method. And currently it just hooks into some events 
and start the host. But first, we're going to need to contact the Unity Gaming Services and say, hey, please allocate me uh, some space on your relay. And all the relay does is it redirects where the data is sent. So normally you would have to port forward, which means opening up your router to people connecting directly to you. And that would be okay if it was just your friends, but if you ever want strangers to connect to you, connecting straight to your router can be quite dangerous. So by using Unity Relay, you're effectively speaking to Unity, you're sending the data to them, and then Unity is relaying it, hence the name, to the other clients. That way, no one is actually connecting directly to you, the person you're trusting is Unity, rather than loads of strangers. So Unity has a relay service, uh, that method that we can call in here. So let's go to the here. We can call relay service dot instance dot create allocation async. And all you need to pass into this really is just the max connection. So it's the max players for your game. And in our case, it's four. But what I've done is I've actually added a field at the top that we can change in the editor if we need to, but it is just going to be four for our game. So max connections. And then because these calls are going to Unity, taking a bit of time because of latency and then coming back, we actually want to use uh, asynchronous calls here to make sure that our code doesn't continue until we're ready. So to do that, we can say here, await relay service dot instance dot create allocations async. And to be able to use that, you have to make the method async. This is all you do, you put public async void start host, and then you put a wait. And any line that's got a wait like this means that the code will pause here until this method is done and it's got back to us. So what we can do is we can store this in a variable. So we'll make uh, allocation, we'll just call it allocation. And we should use a try catch here since we're doing these network calls, something could go wrong along the way. So it's better to try catch the exception. So try catch exception E. And so we'll say in here allocation equals, and then try and get the allocation. And then here we can say like debug.log error, something like uh, relay create allocation request failed. Uh, let's put a dollar sign before so we can put in a variable in our string e dot message just in case something goes wrong. And then here we can either return or we can throw. Uh, throw just means we're basically passing up the exception to the higher level. We're not going to worry too much about exception handling here but this will work for now. And then after this we can then try and get the join code for our allocation. Every allocation has a code to join with so we can then say try catch and the try here is relay service dot instance dot get join code async and to get it you just have to pass in the allocation id of your allocation and since we have that variable up here we can say allocation dot allocation id and this will return to us as you see here a string so what we can do is at the top here, we can make a public string join code, get private set. And we're going to read this from our lobby UI and display it on the UI. So that's why we're making it public, uh, but make sure it's private set so we can only uh, modify it in here. And then we can say join code equals await this. So we're going to wait for it to get us the code before we continue. And if something goes wrong, we can debug.log error relay create join code request failed uh, not create it's uh, get join code request failed uh, the bit of the uh, error logging here I've got from the documentation so uh, that's why I'm doing it like this and then we can also throw here so we don't continue the code afterwards and then with this we have the join code for people to join with and we have the allocation but we've not actually started hosting yet so to take that and be able to host we need to get the relay server data. So we can say here, new relay server data, and that takes in our allocation and a connection type. Now, uh, the connection type they use is DTLS. Uh, we'd have to go look up exactly what that means. It doesn't matter for us at all. Uh, I honestly don't even know if the string here matters, but we do have to put it in. So uh, DTLS is just a type of uh, security protocol. So if we store this in a variable, we'll just say uh, var relay server data equals this. 
and then we can set it. So as long as you call this before start host, all should be good. So we can say here, uh, network manager dot singleton. And we want to get the component off of our network manager for the transport, unity transport. And we can call a method on that, set relay server data. And we just literally pass in our relay server data. And that will set everything up for us to connect to the relay server. All of the data is inside of this server data object. It has everything in here that it needs. And that's quite literally it for the hosting. Uh, they do also add in here some more debug logs. So I'm going to chuck in what they add here just to make sure that we get as much info as we can in the logs. And then for any of this to work, we need to authenticate first. So if we head back to the main menu now, let's add a start method in here, private void start. And we're just going to say uh, on start, authenticate. So to do that, it's also asynchronous. So we need to make this an async void. And we need to say try await unity services dot initialize async. And once we've initialized, we then need to authenticate. So await authentication service dot instance dot sign in. Now, if you notice here, there's many sign in methods. You can sign in and make this work with Steam, Google, Facebook, anything like this. Uh, we're going to use the anonymous async method. It's very easy for testing because you don't have to do anything else. You just call this method and it will sign you in as an anonymous user. And then after this, we can debug log out our ID just to make sure it's worked. So we'll say player ID and then it's authentication service uh, dot instance dot player ID. And then if something goes wrong when authenticating, we can do uh, catch exception E debug dot log error E and then return. And then if we sign in successfully, we can hide the connecting panel. So connecting panel dot set active false and menu panel dot set active true. Uh, set active true. So at the top, I've just got both of these as serialized field game objects. And that's how we authenticate. So now we can head over to our UI and we'll go to the character selection screen. Make sure you reference the text component that displays the text in the editor. And we can take that. And on spawn somewhere, uh, clients don't all have access to this. You could technically sync the code to the client so everyone could display it on the screen. Uh, you could do that if you want as a little challenge, it's a bit more work. For now, we're just going to say at the end here, if you are a host specifically, if is host, um, technically at the moment, the only way you could be a server is if you were a host. So I could put it in there, but if we end up using dedicated servers in this project, I don't want to have this, uh, you know, bug hiding in here ready to, ready to break. So let's do it in host spe uh, specifically. We'll say if is host, uh, join codes text dot text um, is equal to host manager dot instance dot join code. And that's it because uh, the join code here is a public string. So now technically, uh, I think what should happen is everything should work. Uh, we don't have a way to connect as a client yet. That's the final bit. But a host should be able to start hosting, go to the lobby and the code should appear on the top left. So let's just hit host. It starts and there is the code LC9 CQN. We can lock in, go to the, the game, it all works. So now we just need to add a way for clients to join. So for clients, it's even easier than the host because we're just getting the, the lobby or the, the relay. We're not actually creating it. Uh, so let's go to the client manager. And in here, we actually want to take in a string, which will be the join code. And this will be asynchronous too, because we're going to be doing some await calls. So in here, before we start the client, we're going to need to say, just like we did previously, make a variable for the allocation and then try and get the allocation. So allocation equals await relay service dot instance dot join allocation async. And to do that, you just need to pass in the code, which we have. And then if something goes wrong, like if there is just no lobby, uh, no, I keep calling them lobby, sorry. Lobby is technically another thing we will be covering. Um, which ties in with relay, but in here, if the relay doesn't exist or we get an error, then we can say debug log error, uh, relay 
join relay get join code request failed and we can throw but if we do get it then that's actually all we need to do right now we just need to set it uh, on the network manager so var relay server data just like we did in the other script equals new relay server data passing in the allocation and the string uh, dtls and then on the network manager we want to get component the unity transport component and we can set the data before we connect so set relay server data relay server data and that is it and like i mentioned in the other script we can add these logs uh, it's not necessary it's just something they had in the documentation just to log out some more details if in case anything goes wrong so if we head back to unity there should actually be one error which is in the main menu because start client takes in the join code and as long as you have reference to your uh, join code input field, you can then reference that and grab the text from it, which should be the join code. And now that that's done, let it reload. And clients should be able to now, if I make sure on the main menu, menu panel, buttons, client button, as long as that is hooked up to start client and the host is hooked up to start host, uh, everything should be good. Just make sure, like I said, all your variable references are set. And now I'm going to do a build. So I've done a build and it's already taken me to the main menu because it has authenticated me. And if I hit play in the editor, we should see the same thing. Hit play, it takes a second. We are now authenticated. We can host. We'll get a code. So now if I hit client, in theory, nothing should happen because it can't connect, we don't have a code, and we're not connecting locally anymore, we're connecting technically through Unity's relay. So even if I was a different person on a different computer, on a different network, this would still work now if I enter the code. FPP7BG, it's not case sensitive, so you can do it either way. Then you hit client, and as long as you're patient for a few seconds, it then connects you. And just to prove our multiplayer code is still working, if I hit a character in here, that is synced across the network still. I can lock someone in like Abe, go over here, click through the characters, lock in Erica. And boom, we've changed scene, we spawn in the characters. Everything is working just the way it was, but now anybody can connect to our game if we give them the code. So yeah, that's it for this lecture. I hope you enjoyed and found it useful. A lot of people have been asking for this for a while, so now I've got it covered. You guys can go and make your multiplayer games playable by your friends. And next, we're going to be implementing lobbies so that we can have a list of all public lobbies will give you the option to make your lobby public or private if it's private then you can join just like this by a code but if it's public you'll see it in a list and you can go join different people's games if you did enjoy the video or found it useful then please leave a like and subscribe it would help a lot that's it for now and i'll see you in the next one goodbye but of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to Ryan Chu, Gregory Pierce, Mark McCorkle, Sahila, Dario Alvarez, Francisco, and David McDermott. If anyone else would like to help support the channel monetarily, the link to our Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help us out by following on any of those or checking any of those out, that would be greatly appreciated. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.